If you are into AC circuit calculation, then understanding the term impedance is of a key importance. And as you progress your study in electrical engineering, the term impedance get more and more important because we are going to deal a lot with AC circuits. And this video is going to help you out to understand the term impedance in easiest way possible. So if you want to get all these details, you need to watch the video. And before we start, if you're new here, my name is Gaurav J. I post videos related to electrical engineering on this channel in the easiest way possible. So if you're interested in learning electrical engineering in easiest way, make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, click on the notification bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Now let us start with what is impedance. Now the first circuit that you can see on your left, si left hand side consists of a AC source and a resistor. So we can call this circuit as purely a resistive circuit. And as a result, uh, this circuit is only going to offer a resistance to the flow of electrons, right? Now, moving on to the circuit two. Now this circuit consists of uh, a AC source and an inductor. Now this we can call as purely inductive circuit. And as a result, it is going to only offer reactance. Now, since this is specifically offered by an inductor we call it as inductive reactance xl and by the way it is important that you understand these terms what is inductive reactance what is capacitive reactance to understand the term impedance if you don't know what are these terms then i have a dedicated video on inductive and capacitive reactance i'll provide link for that down in the description you can go and check that out so the circuit number two is going to offer inductive reactance to the flow of electrons. Now moving to the third circuit is it has a AC source and a capacitor connected. So we can call it as purely capacitive circuit. So what this circuit is going to offer, it is going to offer a reactance, but since it is offered by a capacitor, we call it as capacitive reactance. So this circuit is going to offer capacitive reactance. So if you see here, all these cases are ideal and these are perfect so definitely they don't exist in in the practical world resistive circuit only offers resistance inductive circuit only offers in capa inductive reactance and capacitive only offers capacitive reactance but if we talk about the practical world this situation you will not find you will always find combination of different different opposition that is being offered in a circuit so for example there can be a situation where you will see circuit has a resistance and it also has an inductor or there can be a situation where resistor is there or and capacitance is there or there will be a situation where uh, the circuit can experience all the three oppositions, right? So taking the example of the most relevant case in the practical which is the combination of resistance, inductance and capacitance. This is the most common practical uh, circuit arrangement you will find, it, the combination of all the types of opposition. So now talking about this circuit here, the flow of electron or the AC will not be only getting resistance, right? There are inductor, there are capacitors in the circuit. So definitely they will also be offering some opposition. So the resistor here, this will offer a resistance clear. Plus we also have an inductor here. So it will offer inductive reactance. Plus we also have a capacitor. Sorry, this is XL and the capacitor will offer XC. So this circuit is experiencing all these opposition. Now you cannot say the circuit is resistive or you cannot say the circuit is reactive. It is combination of all the opposition. So definitely we need a term which is more comprehensive, which is uh, more broader and which can cover all these three oppositions, right? And hence we have a dedicated name for that op this opposition and we call it as impedance. The combination of all the types of opposition is what we call as impedance. Now, just like resistance or reactance, it is also measured in ohms and it is denoted by letter Z. So if you have to find out the opposition that this circuit is offering, you just have to add all these oppositions together and then you'll get an impedance. 
So understood what is impedance and with the help of this impedance we can also make a Ohm's law for AC circuit and we can say voltage is equals to current times the impedance. So this you can refer it as Ohm's law for AC circuit and with the help of this Ohm's law you can identify different parameters like current so I is equals to voltage divided by impedance or you can also find out impedance is equals to voltage divided by current. So understood this is the impedance now if you want to write the term definition for impedance in proper way then you can write impedance is a comprehensive expression of any and all forms of opposition to electron flow including both resistance and reactance. Now this is a really important sentence here that impedance is a comprehensive expression of any and all forms of opposition of a two electron flow. So even your resistance you can call it as impedance in AC circuit. Now we are talking about AC circuit the impedance term is not applicable in case of DC. So even if your AC circuit is having only resistance you can refer it as impedance and that makes more sense or if your circuit only has reactance you can refer it as impedance in case of AC circuit. Now when we talk about a perfect resistance for example now perfect resistance is consists of it will offer 100% resistance so let's say 100% 100 ohms it is offering uh, and the resistance will not have any sort of reactance in it we are talking about perfect resistance so it will only offer uh, resistance it will not have any sort of reactance right and you can also refer it as uh, Im impedance so impedance will also be 100 ohms right clear similarly when we talk about reactance or let's say inductor here uh, inductor a perfect inductor will not have any resistance so 0 ohm it will only offer inductive reactance let's say 100 ohms and since in case of inductive circuit voltage and current are out of phase by 90 degree we write angle as 90 degree it shows the angle between voltage and current so in case of inductive circuit uh, the voltage is leading current by 90 degree and hence it is 90 degree and you can also refer this as impedance is 100 ohms and the angle is 90 degree similarly for capacitive circuit again a perfect capacitor will not have any resistance so 0 ohms it will have xc sorry this is xl here not xc so xc will be let's say 100 ohms but the angle between uh, the voltage and current will be negative 90 degree and why is that because in case of capacitive circuit voltage lags behind the current by 90 degree and that is the reason why it is negative 90 degree. So you can also refer this as impedance is equals to 100 ohms and the angle is negative 90 degree right. So impedance is really important to understand in order to understand the AC circuit and it is a comprehensive term which we can use for all the types of opposition that is being offered to flow of electron in AC circuit. So understood the concept of impedance it is really really easy to understand and also equally important. So I hope this video has helped you in understanding something important today and if it did please do like the video and click on the subscribe button that really helps the channel to grow further and I really really appreciate that. So thank you for watching guys I will see you in my next one but till then keep watching keep learning.